Dead Kingdom Volume 2 Number 4 concludes the arc with an explosive plan to stop the undead army from overrunning the Citadel. We're going to talk about it right here. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Dead Kingdom Volume 2 Number 4 from Red 5 Comics. We're going to cover what happened in the last issue. We're going to talk about what happened in this issue, what we liked, what we didn't like, and give you a final score. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated and make sure you stay tuned to the end for that final rating. Let's talk about the credits. This issue was written by and drawn by and colored by and cover art uh, delivered by Etienne Derpentigny. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, with letters by Jerome Gagnon. Before we dig into the meat of this issue, let's talk about what happened in issue number three. We got an issue long flashback to Alice's lineage where we find out she is a descendant of, for lack of a better term, red slave elves uh, in its ancient mystical fantasy kingdom with dragon riders and advanced technology. Everything is predicated upon the powers that this population of elves drew from these blue crystals. The slaves were forced to work in the mines, considered a sort of class warfare structure. And one of the uh, lower elves became a rebel leader and he managed to stage an uprising by finding a deadly or malicious or evil, if you want to call it that, red crystal. And that gave him the power to um, destroy soldiers, to uh, lead armies and basically complete his wish for an uprising. But when they were beat back by the superior elves with their blue crystal power and the wizards that helped them do it, the leader, whose name was Sirithos, now known as the Plague, uh, imbued the power of the red crystal within himself and turned him into this sort of evil, dark, wizard, elf-like creature. Uh, the blue elves managed to gather the last remaining power that they had and banish Sirithos to a alternate dimension, hopefully sealing him, sealing him off from the world forever. However, we now know that is not the case anymore. Now we pick up with issue number four. Alice has finished telling her story and that had been passed down to her from generations through her family. She thought it was just sort of an old wives tale or a fairy tale. We now know it's all true. And she's riding with Cain and all his compatriots to get back to the Citadel with the what they call the what, the red powder, which is some form of explosive that was in barrels that they got from the, the from the armory. Uh, they happen to see that a large army of the undead is headed towards the citadel ahead of them, and they say, "Well, we you know they're going to get overrun. There's nothing we can do about it." So they come up with a plan, essentially, which is to take an alternate trail, race around the army, get to the bridge that separates the land from the citadel's front gate, and blow it up. It's very standard kind of an 18 style <laughs> uh, plan to, to stop the undead army. And for the most part, it works. However, Merker, who is one of the uh, folks that are in uh, Kane's contingent, gets killed in the process by one of the undead who looks more like a beast than an actual zombie, which means that there are more creatures on the horizon. Uh, they blow up the bridge. The day is saved, but the status quo is pretty much still in place. Sirithos, who is now known as the Plague, is still out there. He's still spawning undead armies, and he still has a vendetta against someone or something, which we don't know what, because the uh, senior elves, the ones that were invested in blue magic, are no longer around anymore from what we can tell. So still not quite, quite clear what he's after or what he intends to do, but the arc and this current volume ends with saving the day, recognizing that the more fights are ahead of them. Just an interesting point of uh, for consideration if you've been keeping up with Red 5 Comics or this particular title, Dead Kingdom. Uh, publishing cycle has been a little bit hit or miss. It's kind of been all, all over the place, to be honest with you. And so even though this ends the arc, we don't know where it goes from here. Will there be a third volume? Uh, what are the plans for the future? That is all TBD. So this could be the very end of it, or it could continue just with something coming up. We're not sure. If we hear more about it, we'll let you know. What did we like about Dead Kingdom Volume 2 Number 4 from Red 5 Comics? Uh, lots of great pacing, lots of great uh, urgency, lots of great action, and the previous issues which gave us a lot of the backstory, at least for Alice's uh, lineage and Sirithos' origins, helped 
explain a lot of what's going on and why. So that makes the story feel bigger, more complete and richer. And the ending on this volume is much better than the ending on the first volume where the first volume just sort of stopped. This one feels like even though they've won the battle, there's still a war ahead. So there's more of a, a, a sense of completed completeness about how this particular issue ends the overall arc for volume two. What didn't we like about this issue? Uh, the ending feels more complete than the ending for the first volume, but it's still not as satisfying as we'd like it to be. We have no idea what the plague is after. We have no idea what he's trying to accomplish or why. I mean, you can presume from the flashbacks that maybe he's out for revenge, but a, a revenge against two, uh, if the elves aren't there anymore, who, who is he going after? What is he trying to accomplish? What is he trying to do? Uh, and, and where, what is the intention of the undead army other than to spread their undeadedness throughout the world? Maybe. Is that the goal? We don't know. So there are still some pretty big questions left on the table. And after, if you put both volumes together, eight issues, um, that's, that's still a lot to ask for some readers. It's better, uh, but still not as satisfying as it could be. Let's switch gears to talk about the art. Etienne essentially did all the art except for the lettering on this particular issue, actually the entire series. Uh, it's very stylized. It has a sort of woodcutter gothic feel to it, which suits the material well. The compositions and the sight lines are all well done. The inks work well with the, uh, with the character designs. And just overall, this is a good looking comic. It, it's certainly not something you would expect out of, out of, say, Marvel and DC for, with the level of detail and, and all kinds of the, the flourishes that you would normally see in, in the, uh, the bigger uh, publishers. But I think it's Sousa's story and, and it, feels, it feels authentic to the time period and the type of fantasy storytelling that Etienne is going for. Final thoughts, Dead Kingdom Volume 2, Number 4 ends the volume, which is the current arc, on a strong note. Uh, you get a lot of urgency, action, good pacing, good character moments. And even though the battles won and they, they haven't won the war, it still feels like a, a more complete ending to this volume than the first volume, which is a step in the right direction. Therefore, we're going to give Dead Kingdom volume two, number four from Red Five Comics an 8.2 out of 10. Uh, solid showing and just a, a good way to end the volume overall, even though uh, there's still a lot more work to do. Uh, do you like fantasy stories that incorporate the undead in you, new and original ways? We want to hear your comments. Please leave them down below. Otherwise, stay tuned through the outro for the next review.